In my video about G. Jones, the first video we put up on this channel, someone who popped up frequently throughout it was a certain producer called Eprom. And while he came up frequently, his music outside of his collaborations with G. Jones was only very briefly touched upon. That's going to change today. Unlike the G. Jones video, where I was already a massive fan before making it, I've not been as familiar with Eprom's music and a lot of his 3D graphic design work. So for those of you who are unfamiliar, we will all be learning a bit together today. In the interest of not repeating myself too much, I won't be elaborating on Eprom's collaborations with G. Jones as I cover them in that video. This video will be delving into Eprom's solo work and his numerous aliases, including Sister City, Deep Sky Objects, and Nasty Ways as well as his collaborations with the aforementioned G. Jones, as well as Zeke Beats, Claude Von Stroke, Ivy Lab, and of course Flume. This video won't be covering his work with Alex Perez as one half of Shades, as I plan on doing a whole separate video covering Shades extensively, so look forward to that. Welcome, this is episode 2 of our series Cult Figures in Music, a series where I talk passionately about music artists and producers that I have a special soft spot for. These are artists that I believe are very unique in their music they make, but it's not just the music they make, it's also the entire audio-visual world that they create, whether it's their live shows or DJ sets, the visuals, the music videos, the art, the social media content, promotional stuff, etc. Alexander Sander Dennis, also known as Eprom, is a longtime bass music producer with a career spanning back as early as 2007, with two albums, 10 EPs, many singles, and one mixtape under his belt, but that's just his solo material. As Shades, his collaborative project with Alex Perez, they have put out another two albums and five EPs, spanning back to 2015. Billboard Dance would write this, describing his music. Eprom's unique sound has cemented him as one of the champions of the underground, varying from toxic hip-hop to searing garage mutations to bizarre concoctions somewhere in between. His production style has become easy to spot, with notable collaborations from artists like G. Jones, Claude Von Stroke, and two feature tracks of Flume's latest release, Hi This Is Flume, his solo work isn't the only thing grabbing everyone's attention. His ability to collaborate with other artists is on full display through his genre-bending project with Alex Perez, dubbed Shades. Eprom earns ears and respect with deconstructed bass beats that shake the ground as they rip through the time-space continuum. It's only the beginning for this brain-busting beast, and we're calling it Billboard Dance. Eprom would release his debut EP, 64 Bites the Dust, on September 27th, 2007 on Aditek Records, the title being a parody of the name of Queen's 1980 classic Another One Bites the Dust. The EP featured the tracks 64 Bites the Dust, Donkey Nap, Schlop, Throbbin the Cradle, Schlop Skeeter's Tuto Disco Mix, and Eprom and Beretta Donkey Nap. Junior Hacksaw Spanking the Donkey Remix. 2009 would see Eprom put out a remix EP for 64 Bytes, released on the 3rd of March of 2009. It would feature remixes from Beretta, Vibe Squad, Ill Gates, Weapons House, and Eprom himself. Later in the year, on the 23rd of November, Eprom will be credited for production work on rapper Prophecies EP titled Zoning. Both tracks on the EP would be produced by Eprom, with the instrumentals and a couple of remixes thrown in too. Warp Records, a label home to many legendary figures in electronic music, such as Aphex Twin, Orteca, Square Pusher, Flying Lotus, Wonotrix Point Never, Danny Brown, Brian Eno, and Hudson Mohawk. It will be the home to Eprom's first single, a double release with fellow producer Eskmo. Eprom would mention in an interview that his first ever album he bought was an Aphex Twin LP, and that releasing on Warp Records is a dream come true. The release featured Eskmo's track Land and Bones, alongside Eprom's track Hent. The track featured lots of nice synthesized strings, with the lasers and bleep bloop sounds being panned left and right, with heavy half-time drums and a powerful Reese bassline pushed right to the front. 
2010 would also see EEPROM drop three EPs, being the Shoplifter EP, with the track Bubble being a standout for me, Still one of my favourite EEPROM tracks after all these years. He also released the Humanoid and Bay Area EPs, another single called Never, and a mixtape titled The Robot Sex Tape, which was 34 minutes of all original EEPROM beats. EEPROM also played some of his earlier shows, playing clubs around America and the UK, playing on lineups alongside people like Nasty Nasty, Vibe Squad, and Eskimo playing in club venues like the Cervantes Masterpiece Ballroom and the Gothic Theatre in Colorado, and Hoya Hoya in Manchester, UK. In 2011, EEPROM quietened down a bit, releasing only two EPs. Before this, however, his remix of the Glitch Mob song Animus Vox was released in January on their Drink the Sea Remixes Volume 1. On July 23rd, 2011, he released the Pipe Dream EP on Rowena Records, featuring the tracks Pipe Dream, Chromium Decay, and A Symbiote, and a double release featuring tracks Feldspar and Psycho. Sander also started a record label this year with the help of his friend Andrew Dubeck. So Cold Records would launch with the release of a three track EP and vinyl pressing titled The Lesotho Protocol. It's a collection of lo-fi, housey sounding tracks, but still with EEPROM's familiar sound palette we've been hearing up until this point. Still Cold Records will be the home to very few releases over the years, with the last release being two years ago, being an album teaser for Deep Sky Objects' 2020 self-titled LP. Deep Sky Objects being the name of the collaborative project between Sander and Andrew. What's confusing is that Deep Sky Objects' LP released on the label Never Ready Records, while the teaser for the album was put up on Still Cold. As of this point in time, Still Cold and Never Ready Records have been inactive and abandoned, with Still Cold's Instagram being private and Twitter account no longer existing. If anyone has more information about this, please let me know in the comments below. Anyway, back to EEPROM. At this point, EEPROM had mastered the art of releasing EPs, and for the next year had planned something bigger. In 2012, EEPROM would release his debut album, Metahuman. With 13 tracks, this thing was solid and consistent from front to back, with EEPROM experimenting with new sounds, but in keeping with his slower, groove-driven sound that is still at the forefront of this LP. The LP garnered attention from people such as Anthony Fantano, who started off his review boldly stating, this is such a headphone album, quote, which I'm inclined to agree with. And this is such a headphone album. Not a phrase I use much to describe albums, only when it's necessary. All of the tracks on this have loads of small details. Lots of intricate sounds and production went into this, which can really be appreciated on a good pair of headphones. This album would feature one of the biggest tracks to EEPROM's name yet, Regis Chilbin, which he and G. Jones still play in their shows to this day. EEPROM had also started a duo project over the last few years with fellow producer Beretta, and had been releasing tracks as Nasty Ways since 2007. They had a few original tracks, along with a Lil Wayne remix, and a free track titled Pass Me The Laser Beam. A month after Metahuman's release, EEPROM and Beretta would drop their final Nasty Ways release on the Glass Air Records, which was the same label that released the Drink The Sea remix as mentioned earlier. The two tracks on this release were called Cyber Snake and Scracken. The following year, on October 14th, 2013, Sander would drop his second album, titled Half-Life. With 14 tracks and two Bandcamp exclusive bonus tracks, this album demonstrated an evolution of EEPROM sound, with his highest quality production to date and some of his most popular tracks to come out at this point, with the massive Beasts of Babylon and Hurricane coming out at the start of the record, setting the bar high from the get-go. Both tracks display EEPROM's signature skill of creating thick bass textures with punchy drums and catchy supersaw melodies. The track Center of the Sun is another heavy, twisting, bass-driven track with a few simple drum patterns thrown in. 
but mostly driven by that heavy, relentless bass that flexes like elastic inside your head, speeding up and slowing down and constantly changing and shifting around throughout the track. A highlight on this album for me is the song Screwface, which has easily the strongest groove of all the tracks on this thing, with lots of bleep loops at the start, which eventually get overtaken by the main bass line, which continues throughout the track, and some halftime drums coming in too. To me this album is a big step up in production compared to Metahuman from the previous year. Twenty fourteen was the quietest year when it came to releases for EPROM. As far as I can tell, the only release of that year was a remix of Claude von Stroke's twenty thirteen track Plasma Jelly, which EPROM put quite a spin on. creating something really different from the slow and plodding original track, with the highlight of the track for me being a siren sound that comes in at 1 minute and 16 seconds. It reminds me of the Woman Worldwide version of Justice's track, Stress. Something I missed in my G. Jones video was the short-lived collaboration project Greg had with DJ Shadow called Night School Click in 2015, which a couple of you mentioned in the comments. Eprom did a remix of their track, Nice Nightmares. Honestly, if I was Greg or DJ Shadow and I received this as a remix, I'd be blown away. This is one of many gems in Eprom's discography. In 2015 we got introduced to Shades, but also a new project called Sister City, a trio featuring Sander, DJG and Hedge Fund, who would release their debut EP on April 13th. The EP was called Rites of Dacia, and would feature three tracks, Supermatism, Dust Meridian, and the title track Rites of Dacia. In October, EPROM would be part of a collective two-track release with Claude Von Stroke's alias Barclay Crenshaw. And while you wouldn't believe it, the track Moon Juice was made entirely out of 808 sounds, all twisted and manipulated into different elements of the track. It's honestly amazing how they got a track to sound so coherent while using only one limited sound palette. <laughs> to start off 2016, Sister City would have a new track release on the compilation Homie Land Volume 2 on Bromance Records. The track was called Blood Mind, and it's easily my favourite Sister City track. G. Jones would later recommend this on Twitter, as well as introduce it into his DJ sets in 2022. In March, Sister City would drop a new track and an EP, both coming out on Boys Noise Records just over a week apart from one another. Back, 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 2016 would also mark the first time that EPROM would collaborate with G. Jones. The two had been friends for a few years at that point, and as a matter of fact, both went to the same high school, albeit nine years apart. As mentioned in my G. Jones video, this was one of the first of many tracks they made together. Warrior is an insane track, so it's no surprise Aphex Twin himself would play it at his shows at Primavera Festival in Barcelona, and the track Brixton at Field Day in England in 2017. Aphex Twin also has some upcoming shows this year in 2023 at Field Day in London, Best Kept Secret in Holland, and Sid for Solen in Denmark. So we will have to wait and see if he will play these or any other EPROM tracks. The Samurai EP was yet another tight-knit and cohesive collection of four tracks which consisted of the title track, Samurai, Brixton, Warrior, and Nine to Your Dome. So that's the end of part one. 
I know this video wasn't nearly as exciting as my previous long form videos, but believe me when I say part 2 is going to be a lot more exciting as we get into Ebron's more recent work and, in my opinion, his best so far. In the time since I started making this video, Eprom has also been building up to his new album, Synthism, as well as doing some of the craziest live shows I have ever seen. He's put out three singles so far, and is going to be releasing the album this Friday. And believe me when I say I'm very excited for this album. So much of the unreleased music we've heard over the last few years of Eprom shows will be on it, and more. Also, if you went to his new Synthism Robotics show and have any footage of it, and are okay with it being used in a video on this channel, please send me a message on Discord. I'll have my username in the description below. Anyway, make sure you stay tuned for part 2, and maybe a dedicated video for the album Synthism itself. That's about it. Now be sure to like and subscribe and all the other stuff everyone on this site tells you to do. I'll see you next time.